day in a row, President Trump refused to commit to accepting the results of the upcoming election if his rival Joe Biden wins. Trump was asked about the election as he left the White House to campaign in North Carolina. Mr. President, are the election results only legitimate if you win? So uh, we have to be very careful with the ballots. The ballots, that's a whole big scam. We want to make sure the election is honest, and I'm not sure that it can be. I don't, I don't know that it can be with this whole situation. Unsolicited ballots. There are unsolicited millions being sent to everybody, and we'll see. President Trump made a similar comment Wednesday when questioned at a White House press briefing. Will you commit here today for a peaceful transferal of power after the election? Well, we're going to have to see what happens. You know that I've been complaining very strongly about the ballots, and the ballots are a disaster. I understand and, that, but and, people are rioting. Do you oh, commit no, to making sure that there's a no, peaceful we wanna, transferal of power? We want to have get rid of the ballots, and you'll have a very trans. We'll have a very peaceful. There won't be a transfer, frankly. There'll be a continuation. Uh, the ballots are out of control. You know it, and you know who knows it better than anybody else. The Democrats know it better than anybody else. Trump's remarks have been criticized by both Democrats and Republicans. On Thursday, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell tweeted, there will be an orderly transition just as there has been every four years since 1792, unquote. But at the same time, McConnell is vowing to rapidly confirm Trump's soon-to-be-announced nominee to replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg on the Supreme Court. Earlier this week, Trump admitted he wants the Senate to rapidly confirm his nominee because the election could end up before the Supreme Court. Meanwhile, The Atlantic magazine has revealed Republican Party officials are looking at multiple ways to subvert the election process to ensure Trump stays in power. One option would be to have Republican-led state legislatures claim the results of the election to be fraudulent, then choose a slate of Republican electors to vote in the Electoral College, regardless of the outcome of the actual vote. We're joined right now by Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist Barton Gilman, staff writer at The Atlantic. His new piece is headlined, The Election That Could Break America. Barton Gelman is author of several books, including Dark Mirror, Edward Snowden, and The American Surveillance State. Barton, thanks so much for joining us on Democracy Now! Can you lay out in detail—no sound bites, please—exactly what you found are the plans not only being talked about, but are actually being laid out all over the country? And also, what, then, surprised you most? The president is running a campaign that is premised on the idea uh, that he may not win uh, or will not win if all the votes are counted. And he's looking for insurance policies. Uh, that it begins with uh, traditional Republican efforts to suppress the vote on Election Day uh, and extends to this long campaign he's been running against mail-in ballots uh, as a way of delegitimating them and uh, laying the groundwork for a post-election uh, or mid-count challenge that would be intended to stop the count, to uh, lock in whatever results there are on election night, uh, when, because of the way he has uh, divided the uh, vote along partisan lines, there will be more Republicans, uh, he forecasts, voting in person on Election Day, and more Democrats voting by mail uh, with counts that will continue on past election night. Uh, and so uh, delegitimating the, uh, the mail-in vote is a way of stopping the overtime count that everyone is expecting now. Uh, because we're not going to have an election night, we're going to have an election week, perhaps, or, or longer, during which the provisional ballots and the mail-in ballots, the absentee ballots, will be counted. Now, among the things uh, that uh, some Trump people are talking about is a maneuver that would start by saying that the uh, the, the count has been poisoned by fraud, uh, has been rigged, uh, is hopelessly mired in, in, in uh, unacceptable 
conduct, <clears throat> and therefore that the count can't be relied upon. And we are all accustomed to the idea that electoral votes are distributed based on the way the, the popular vote goes in a given state. Uh, if somebody gets the most votes in my state, then that candidate gets that state's electoral votes. The Constitution does not actually guarantee that result. Um, that's a decision that's made by each state because the power to appoint electors is given in the Constitution to state legislatures. Uh, the, the idea circulating in the Trump campaign and among some of its allies is that under some circumstances, they could ask state legislatures to take back that power and simply appoint Trump electors, uh, regardless of the vote count in the state. Explain uh, what loyal electors are, Barton. Well, electors are pledged uh, to one candidate or the other. Uh, which electors are appointed depends usually on the outcome of the election. When I say usually, I mean for the past 150, 175 years. <clears throat> but uh, in, in theory, uh, and depending on state law and all kinds of other complexities, uh, the Republican legislature of a state like Pennsylvania uh, could choose to simply appoint electors who are pledged already to Trump uh, based on their assessment that the, uh, that the vote count in that state uh, is fraudulent or uh, marred by fraud, and therefore that they are going to protect the will of the people by, by appointing Trump electors. Uh, in the 2000 recount between uh, Bush and Gore, uh, the Republicans actually started down this road. Uh, the, the recount was still under litigation, uh, and the uh, the date for the Electoral College vote was approaching uh, in December when the uh, Republican House in Florida uh, passed a resolution to appoint electors in, in, in Bush's name. And the Senate was going to vote on the same day that Gore conceded the election. And since I mentioned concession, uh, it's the premise of my article, and I try to explain why that uh, Trump's strategy is never to concede, that he may win, he may lose, but under no circumstances will he concede this election. That's a big problem because we don't actually have a mechanism for forcing a candidate to concede, uh, and concession is the way we have ended elections. There's no grand umpire who has jurisdiction over the whole election who can blow a whistle and say, the election is over, you won, you lost, uh, and make that stick. Uh, we have relied instead on the loser to accept reality uh, when the time comes. So you mention in your article that this will be the first election in 40 years to take place without a federal judge requiring the Republican National Committee to seek approval in advance for any ballot security operations at the polls. Why is this oversight so crucial, Barton? Well, let me just give a a backstory that helps explain that. Uh, in the 1981 gubernatorial election in New Jersey, the uh, Republican National Committee organized what it called a, a ballot security task force. That was the euphemism. And uh, it composed of uh, a lot of off-duty uh, law enforcement officers, sheriffs, and so forth, wearing guns, talking into radios, wearing uh, ballot security armbands who uh, went to polling places in uh, neighborhoods, predominantly people of color, uh, and in, in Trenton and Newark, uh, and just bluntly to suppress the vote. They, they challenged people's credentials. They, uh, they, they gave stern warnings against, uh, pe about penalties for unlawful voting. Uh, they, generally speaking, intimidated uh, the voters and some poll workers uh, barging into uh, closed areas, giving instructions to poll workers. 
in some cases physically pre preventing poll workers from assisting voters who needed help uh, physically filling out their ballots, uh, which is a, a normal function. Uh, and the Democratic National Committee sued and uh, after introducing evidence, quickly won a consent decree in which the judge forbade a whole long list of intimidation techniques uh, and required that the RNC would submit any plans it had for election day operations to the judge for prior approval. And that lasted almost 40 years. Uh, the uh, RNC persuaded the judge uh, in 2018 uh, to lift this consent decree, to lift the preclearance order, uh, because there had been no recent violations by the RNC of the consent decree. Uh, so it was, the logic was uh, that this consent decree is no longer needed because it worked. So uh, the RNC is now free to choose its own forms of election day operations, its own ballot security, uh, and we'll have to see what happens. But uh, the, the Trump campaign and the Republicans are recruiting uh, what they're calling an army for Trump of uh, 15,000 or so volunteers who will monitor uh, the security of the polls. Uh, and that means going into Democratic areas and looking for suspicious people.